Hey guys, Kathy here of Kathy LaPierre Art. And today I'll be showing you how to create this super cute sea turtle using an acrylic panel and Counterculture's medium viscosity resin. Ready? Let's do it. All right, guys, so first thing you want to do is prep your acrylic cutout. And it comes like this with paper on both sides just to protect it so it doesn't get scratched. But you do want to remove the paper from both sides before starting. Now, however, you do need to protect the back from drips from your resin. So you can use blue painter's tape like I've done here. Or for the piece we'll be working on today, I actually just ordered liquid latex for the first time and I'm really loving it so far. Um, you just brush it on the back and it dries clear. You can sort of see the, the waviness from it, but this is a nice, clear, smooth piece. So that's just because of the latex. So first thing I did was I mixed up about four ounces of medium viscosity artist resin. And I divided that out into separate cups here. And first I just took about two tablespoons of some white beach sand. You can use any color you like, but I wanted a Caribbean feel. So I went with the light color, but you just need a, maybe a drizzle of resin until you get a nice paste consistency that you want. For our lighter blue color, I have about one ounce of resin mixed with two ounces, excuse me, two drops of Lake blue alcohol ink from Bria Reese. And then I also have about two ounces of ultramarine blue alcohol ink added to this resin. So just clearing off my space so I don't knock anything over. Now I'm flipping my piece over to make sure I'm working on the smooth side. You don't want to start pouring resin on the liquid latex side. So I'm going to start with my beach sand and what I'm going to do is just kind of draw an imaginary line for where I want the line of the beach to start. So just using a popsicle stick, I'm just going to kind of drop it on there and spread it out with the stick. Now this can be a little bit time consuming, so I'm going to speed this part up for you. There we go. Jeez, I wish I could do my dishes that fast. Whew. I'm just scraping off the edges. Any place that I see that the sand kind of went too far over the edge, just scraping it off with the same stick. All right, time for the fun part. So we're gonna get into our colors now. Uh, we're gonna start with our ultramarine blue. And I like to use paper cups because you can pinch them and get a nice little pour spot with them. So I'm going to take my dark blue color and we're going to drizzle it right across the top of the acrylic panel. Now you just want enough resin to cover your panel. You don't want so much that it's just flowing over the sides because you're just wasting resin. You really want just a nice amount of coverage on this. And then we're going to spread it out afterwards. Now I'm taking my lake blue and we're putting this across the middle and this one I have about two ounces of the dark blue I had one ounce I think I said two my mistake one ounce of the ultramarine blue two ounces of the lake blue that I'm using right now and again we're just filling in the space making sure we get everything and we're going right up to the edge of that sand So I'm just gonna take my gloved hand and I'm just gonna go right in the resin and I'm gonna start blending the two colors together and also filling in any of these little spots that I see that, that didn't get filled in. This just helps to push the resin to where you want it, you know, cause it's gonna self level anyways. And this way you won't use too much resin by just trying to pour it until it's full.
I do have some extra uh, of the ultramarine, so I did go ahead and drizzle this on because I hate to waste it. And I kind of want to bring the darker down just a little bit lower. So I'm just kind of drizzling it around, making sort of a squiggly line, which doesn't really matter because I'm just going to mess it up with my fingers anyways. Now I'm just kind of drawing some little waves in there with my finger just to give it, give it a little bit more texture. And we're just going to hit it with the heat gun to pop any bubbles. Just on low heat, not too close. And I got these cute little sea creatures on Amazon. This is a little stingray. So we're going to put him right up here at the top. And we want to get them sort of close up high to the dark part of the water. Because once we put our waves in, you don't want the waves to cover up your cute little creatures. And I'm also going to put some seashells in here down on the sand. So I'm just going to stick these right down here together on the bottom. And these are just some seashells my friend actually found at the beach when she went on vacation. She brought these back to me from um, South Carolina. And I had a little bit of clear resin left over, so I'm just drizzling, drizzling a little bit over the shells just to make sure that they're totally coated and that they're not going to pop out or anything. And again, I'm just scraping off some more of the sand that I see that kind of made its way over the edge. Okay, sticking in our little friend up the top here. And again, I'm gonna take some of that clear resin that I had and just kind of drizzle it over him to make sure that he's really locked in there. Now, I didn't wanna just pour it directly over him because I'm using clear and obviously everything else is colored. So I didn't wanna have a big clear circle around my little guy. So I kind of, you can see I drizzle it back and forth with the stick so that it still sort of looks like waves. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna hit it with the heat gun one more time. See some more bubbles rising up to the surface. So I just wanna get rid of those before I move on to the next step. Okay guys, this guy looks pretty good. We're gonna leave him to cure for 12 hours and come back for the next step. Hey guys, I'm back. So it's been about 12 hours and this is nice and cured, ready to go for the next layer. So I've gone ahead and mixed up about, I mixed up four ounces of resin, but I'm gonna have too much. I figured I'd rather have just too much than too little. So I'll use the extra in, you know, something else, some earrings or a car coaster mold or something. So I'm gonna start with my clear. So I'm going to draw a line right across where I want my white line to go. Just like that. And then I'm going to drizzle a little bit of clear behind it.
Now we're going to take our dark color and again I used the same uh, ultramarine blue and I mixed up a bunch of amounts of this. Okay, now we're going to take our lake blue, and I have about, I'd say an ounce and a half of this one. And I'm just filling in the space. Give it a little tip. Okay. So I can still see where my line is. We're going to take our white. And we're going to pour it right across. Same way. Just like that. Okay, now we're going to take our heat gun on high and spill this. Take a little bit more because it's not quite thick enough. Again. Now we're going to take our torch. Give it a little tip. All right, we'll let this cure for another 8 to 12 hours. Come back, do the next layer. So see you guys for the next part. Hey, guys, back for the next layer. So we started with the first layer, and I used about 4 ounces total. So that also included the little bit of drizzle I added to the sand, but that wasn't very much. So um, where I did 4 ounces before, we're going to do 3 ounces this time. So I've gone ahead and mixed up my resin ready to go. Um, I've got my same exact colors. I've got the dark blue, which is ultramarine blue, my lighter blue, which is lake blue. That's this guy right here. And then I also have my white, which is my Armor Art white epoxy pigment. 
So I've gone ahead and mixed up those colors accordingly. And we're gonna start with our dark color and we're gonna go right across the top, same as before. And if you have some extra, that's fine. I'd rather you have extra than put too much on and then have it all flowing off the sides because it's a lot harder to control when you have too much resin. You really just want a good coverage. And then, let's see, we're gonna take, and yeah, we'll take our lighter blue. And we'll go right about here. Just getting a nice wave effect to this. Gonna just so there isn't too much on the thing, we're gonna tip off any excess. We don't have too much. That's good. We're gonna take our white now and go right along the same line that I just made. So we're gonna push it back just a little bit because it looks like it flowed a little too much. So I'm gonna move you to right about here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna take our white and we're gonna go right across in the same place. Just like that. All our colors out of the way. Now we're gonna take our heat gun and on high. I am gonna put a little bit more. I want that line to be nice and dark along the edge. Just like that. I do have a little bit of overflow right here. I'm just gonna scoop that out of there. Like that. It may still flow forward, but that's all right. Just don't want a ton of it to disappear through that little crevice. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Okay, now we're gonna take our torch. Just break up those solid spots as much as we can. Stretch them a little bit. Do a little bit more white. Okay, when you get some good lacing, we'll pull it back just a little bit. And that's it. We'll see you for the next part. All 
All right, so now we're gonna take our medium blue color and go right across his head. Okay, so now we've got our white, and that was the same for the lake blue. Um, this one, we're using the same white for the epoxy. And I'm just gonna tip a little to make sure I don't have too much resin on there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Tiny bit more. All right, now we're gonna take our heat gun. I'm on high heat. I think that looks pretty good. Let's give it a little tilt. We got our torch. Put a tiny, tiny bit more. And get the lines started before I start pouring. It's pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna give them a little black here so I can see my friend. Okay. Almost done, guys. See you tomorrow. Okay, guys, we're on the last part of this. So I'm going to show you how I get the drips off the back. I'm just going to show you this one little section here um, because it takes forever. Um, heat it up with the heat gun just to warm it up a little bit. And whether you use liquid latex or tape, it still takes some work to get them off. But because you've got that barrier uh, between the drips, it's just easier to pick them off. So just very carefully, you can use your fingernail or you can use these little flathead um, jewelry pliers that I have. Just be careful that you don't bend the resin up and over the sides. You don't want to pop off the resin from the front. Now, if that's something that you are worried about, you could scuff up the front of this acrylic panel with a little um, sandpaper, maybe a three or 400 grit. I didn't find that necessary unless you're really rough with it on the front. You don't want to pull your um, your resin off the front. You can see I'm struggling here trying to get every little last piece of that latex off so I can get those little resin bits. This last one was really 
giving me a hard time. And last one, a little bit more heat on this guy and he'll come right off. All right, he looks pretty good. So he is officially finished. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I attach the hardware to the back of this. Again, this is really easy. If you don't have uh, Countercultures UV resin, I definitely highly suggest it. Makes easy work like this. Um, makes this work really easy, I should say. Anything that you need to attach um, findings to or anything you need to fix up really fast, fill air bubbles, UV resin is the way to go. So I have a couple of these little picture hangers and this chain. Um, I got all of this at Michael's. And I unspooled the chain and I measured out about 18 and a half inches worth of chain. Now I'm just gonna take my jewelry pliers, two pairs actually, and we're gonna hold one link of the chain right where I measured, one plier on each side. So that way you can grab each side of it and bend it open. Now when you do this, you don't wanna pull away from each other, you want to pull, you kind of want to twist one hand up, the other hand down. You never want to pull apart from each other. It's much harder to get that back together again and have it complete a nice circuit when you bend it back together. So here's my UV resin. And of course you need the UV light. So I'm just going to place my hardware where I want it to go. And I'm going to put a little bit of UV resin down first, just to make sure that that piece is stuck on. And a little for the other one. Then you just want to take your resin and cover over the back of those pieces to make sure that they're completely covered and that they'll be completely fixed onto your resin piece. So we're going to take our heat lamp or our UV light and we're going to put this on for a total of two minutes. So this is our first minute. Done. <laughs> now we're on to our second minute. Boop, done. Power of TV. Love it. <laughs> So that is our turtle. It's all nice and hard. Our hardware is on there permanently. So I'm going to show you how I go ahead and attach the chain. So you just need to grab that chain, um, the link that you opened on the end, and you want to put that right on the hardware with one set of pliers and then grab your second set of pliers and hold on to the other end and bend the two pieces back together. Remember, we're not pulling outwards and then pushing inwards. We're pushing up and down at the same time with each hand, if that makes sense. So there you go, guys. My acrylic ocean wave turtle is finished. This takes about four layers to make, but it's pretty easy to do. You just need to work on those ocean waves and practice. Um, this would make a great gift for that person you don't know what to buy for. This would also look great hanging on your porch or on the wall at your beach house, because we all have a beach house, right? <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to do the next one for you. Bye, guys. Take care.